Hey guys, it's Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. So if you're not a regular viewer or subscriber of my YouTube channel or my Instagram, you may not know this, but I have been documenting my sober journey since day one. This video is a huge milestone for me. Um, I am now two years sober, which is absolutely mind boggling to think about. The surprise that I want to share with you guys today is something I've been working on for quite some time. I've been very quiet about it, but I am so ready to tell everyone now. And that is that I wrote a book and I am releasing it today on the anniversary of my two years of sobriety. So if you guys want to hear all about my sober journey um, coming up to two years and hear all about the book, how you can get it and what went into creating this, then please go ahead and keep on watching this video. First of all, two years. That is so long. Like, I can't even fathom. Like, if you told me two years ago this is what was going to happen, I would have never believed you. Oh my gosh, no way. I will say, coming up on two years, at the end of one year, if you watched my one year sober video, I thought, this was it. I made it. I did it. One year and I am good. Not the case. Um, now at the end of two years, I finally feel like everything has been done. I will explain why in a few minutes, but I just feel like I finally accepted and come to full closure with everything that has happened in the past two years. Um, and honestly, just seeing how it went into two years, I feel like every year I'm going to feel this way, like I'm finally at the end or something new because we're constantly learning and growing and changing throughout our life. You can't stop that. It just happens. So I feel like I will never actually be done. But I will elaborate a little bit more of as to why I feel that way um, and tying that into what that has to do with my book. So now coming on two years, a lot of this is going to be in this book. Um, this book follows my first two years in sobriety. So, so things I really discovered between one year and two years. I really started to focus on the people I was allowing into my life, whether it was friends or relationships. Um, I took people out of my life that were no longer good for me or didn't add to my life in a positive way. I really discovered as I finished up another year of sobriety that I had really unhealthy relationships with men. Um, I'm way more precautious now about who I let into my life. I have boundaries that I've set for myself of things I will and will not allow for people in my life to do. I've just come to a much healthier place with relationships because for quite some time I was almost fixated on the idea that I still needed someone else to make me feel good and make me feel whole. And I was constantly looking for um, someone to be in a relationship or someone to meet, thinking that if I had that component in my life, that everything else would just fall into place. And that is a completely unhealthy way to think. It is an unhealthy way to live. And it is not the answer to any of your problems. I can tell you that. Anyone else can tell you that. But you're not going to find the solutions of your problems and other people or other things outside of you. Um, everything you need to be happy, healthy, and to grow as a person can be found within you. Um, disclaimer, that may or may not be the topic of something I'm writing. So, wink, wink. I can't really wink that well, but wink, wink. <laughs> I discovered my absolute love for traveling. I'm sure you guys see I travel a lot. I discovered that traveling gives me that kind of high, I guess, that I used to get from um, partying and drinking. Like, I feel incredible when I'm traveling. I'm so happy. I love being in nature and seeing new things. I'm more invested in my faith now than ever. My family's even been attending church with me, which has been really great. I'm more in touch with kind of like the universe. I know this is hippie talk, but like dreams, the universe, like higher powers. Like I have received such signs and dreams and things that like are too coincidental to be coincidences. I'm telling you, there's no way. Like I totally believe in all of those things and that the universe lines things up for you exactly how they're supposed to be. So that is in this book as well. <laughs> I feel like I just keep referencing to this book, so I might as well just jump into talking about it. After I started the blog, SoberAF.com, I just had this stirring in my heart to do more. I had so many people reaching out to me in emails and videos in the comments like, oh my gosh, people are sending me all these messages and they had stories like mine. And something I noticed when I was going through my sober journey and when I was struggling was that I didn't know where to get support or where to get help from. And I was looking for reassurance in other people that what I was trying to do could be done and that people could be successful and still live their lives and change their lives completely and still enjoy them. So everything I found, the books, the articles, the videos, it was all people that were a lot older than me. I'm 28 years old now. I started my sobriety when I was 26. And I will say, like, I just kept finding books about, like, people that were grown adults that were drinking every day after work and, you know, people that couldn't wake up without a drink. And I just didn't relate to any of it because that wasn't me and that wasn't my story. And I think that's what made me kind of 
live in denial for the first year about the whole word alcoholic because I just saw myself as a binge drinker and a partier. I didn't see myself as like living as an alcoholic, but that is a form of alcoholism and that's a form of alcoholism that is very prevalent today. A lot of girls my age and younger in college and high school, like there's a ton of binge drinking and it's extremely dangerous. You hear all the time about these girls at parties, you know, getting things happening to them, horrible things, and it all kind of stems down to this, you know, binge drinking, partying, taking drugs, all of these things. So my first reasoning for writing sober as was to put something out there that people like me could relate to because I felt like there wasn't, that was kind of like a shadowed millennial generation thing that people didn't want to address and people didn't want to talk about um, because people weren't identifying it as actual like alcoholism because it was just like young reckless partying and really it, it is a form of alcohol addiction. Drinking has become such an identity for a lot of young women and men um, and men and women of all ages that everything just kind of gets associated to drinking so that's why this is so prevalent. So that was the number one reason I started writing this book was because I wanted something out there that was what I was looking for because I realized there were so many people like me looking for support and looking to reach out to other people to relate and look for that light at the end of the tunnel that there was hope that it could be done. And I wanted to share what I went through with other people. So I had the blog already. Right around my 28th birthday, I had this dream. In this dream, I was out, I was walking in some place. I don't even know where I was really. I saw this book on the floor by a table. And I went over and picked the book up. I didn't know what it was. And I just opened it. And the first page I opened to was actually this photo right here on the cover. That's why I put it on the cover because it's kind of what started everything. Um, I opened this book and I saw this photo of me, you know, glassy, glazed over eyes. I'm not even there when you look at my eyes in this photo. Like, I am gone. I'm so drunk. I'm clinging to a bottle of Grey Goose. I have a cup in my hand. Like, oh my gosh, I think this was like from New Year's Eve. But this photo was in that book in my dream when I opened it. And I was like, what? So I kept flipping through the pages. And as I flipped through the pages in the book, I started to realize it was all photos of me from when I was drunk in my past. And it was the words of my story of what what I had been through and what I had come out of. I woke up and I was like, ding, 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 universe and God just sent me loud and clear what I'm supposed to do and I would be a fool to ignore it. So a few days later, I was on a plane to California for my first solo vacation, my first trip to the West Coast by myself, and I wrote the intro to Sober on a plane on my way to California. That's when it started in January and for the next four months, I poured everything into this book. Like, I'm telling you, I poured every emotion, every thought, every feeling. Um, I had to relive a lot of things, which made it a little difficult. The emotions that came out, I was reliving. I, I had to stop writing sometimes because I literally felt myself slipping into depression. I knocked this whole thing out in like two to three months. I got up an hour early every day and wrote for an hour solid. I would wake up, feed my dog, make my coffee, and just start writing. Um, this book was the first time I've shared a lot of my story and with, with every YouTube video, I opened up about it a little bit more, but the reason I say when I talk about, it, I feel like it's finally done for me at two years is because there were a lot of details about what happened that I was still, I think, in denial and ashamed about and things that I hadn't fully accepted that I have gone through in therapy and things I didn't even acknowledge, horrible things that had happened to me while I had been drinking that much, um, I finally came full circle and accepted and dealt with. So this book is not sugar-coated, no silver lining. Like, you are going to hear the down and dirty details of exactly what happened. You're going to hear the details of every single thing that happened the night I ended up in the emergency room, the night I almost died and lost my life that changed everything. You're going to hear about the struggles I had through my first year. You're going to hear about the things I finally accepted about myself, that I live with depression and anxiety, that I had unhealthy relationships with men and friendships. Um my relationship with my family. I have an entire chapter in here just to my mom kind of thanking her and apologizing to her for everything I put her through and how I'm so happy with where we are now. I talk about my relationship with God, the universe, higher powers, my love for travel, how I really came full circle and how I had to rebuild every single part of my life from the ground up and that I couldn't have done that until I was smashed to pieces and literally had to put it back together piece by piece in a way to make it the best life I could possibly create for myself. I will say there are a lot of things in here that people may know me may be a little bit surprised about. I kept a lot of it quiet because I was 
you know, still a little bit ashamed of things. I kept saying I was so open and I was letting everything out, but really I was still holding a lot of it in. When my mom actually read the back cover of this for the first time and really grasped the idea of everything that had really happened, like we had a total half hour mother-daughter meltdown. I told her everything. She, I mean, I opened up and it just all poured out. And we were sitting on my bed. I was crying hysterically. She was crying. My mom was just holding me and she was saying, you know, it's all over now. It's done. It's over. And when she said that, like, it really hit me at that moment that it wasn't done until this point because I was still holding on to all those things that I was so scared and ashamed of. And when my mom was saying, you know, like, it's all over now, it's all over now, it was like... Like, it is all over now. Like, I put it all out. I told her everything. Everybody knows everything. I'm not hiding any part of my story anymore. I'm not ashamed of it in any way, shape, or form. If I was going to do this book, I told myself I was going to do it 200%. I was not going to hold back. I was not going to hide things. If I wanted to put my story out there to help people, I it would be unfair for me to give it to people in a way that wasn't 100% raw, authentic, and real. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. And that's exactly what I did. I cannot tell you the sense of pride I have and how excited I am to share this with you guys. I put every bit of my heart and soul into this book. I am telling you, it is the most difficult thing I have ever done. And it is my most prized possession by far. I feel like with this book, I've finally come to terms. I've I've processed everything. I've dealt with everything. And I'm so excited for the potential it has to help other people. I mean, first, let me say, I don't even know if anyone's going to read this book. Um, it's going to be on Amazon and Kindle. I will have everything linked down below where you can find it. I'm hoping to potentially one day um, record it for Audible so it can be an audiobook as well. If that does happen, that will be linked down below too. Um, I will have all the info of where you can buy it. But I want to tell you guys, like, no one may buy this. No one may read it. I mean, let's just be honest. I'm just a girl from Detroit that decided to self-publish a book about her two years in sobriety. But if people do read this, if people do want to hear my story and, and kind of try to relate to what I'm going through, if they're going through something, like, I'm just praying and hoping that, like, this can make a difference to someone. Somebody out there that's struggling not only with alcohol, like, I had to face so many sobering realities along the way of getting sober about myself and how I was living and that were the underlying reasons for my problems with alcohol and partying. So this book is for like every millennial girl out there that has been drinking her life away and unhappy and wants to change. This book is for every person that is so desperate to find themselves in someone or something else that is just searching to find self-love again. This book is for people that feel like there's no hope and are trying to cope with mental health issues. This book is for people that don't understand or maybe know someone going through this struggle that don't get what it's like to go through it. I just want this book to give hope and faith and courage to people and reassurance and love that you can change. Like, it's not easy and I'm not going to bullshit. You guys, like, this was the hardest two years of my life. This was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And opening up like this, it has been terrifying for me. Like, I know people are going to judge me. People are going to have things to say. But nothing happens from being closed and not stretching your boundaries and trying to make a difference. And I've cracked myself open for this. Like, I've put everything in it just for the chance that someone else out there might take something from this, you know, be able to go through their struggle or their journey and take something from this to make it easier. Because I know I was so desperately searching for things along the way. And I felt like I struggled to find a lot of the resources that I really needed. So that is my hope for this book is that you guys will take it, share it with someone who needs it. So I'm going into two years sober. I am thrilled with where I've gotten so far. I am finally at a place of self-love and like I finally rediscovered myself. I'm in such an amazing place of self-love and self-care. I have come so far from day one. Like it's not even funny. If you watch my older videos, you can probably see that. Um, I am so excited to share sober you guys. I will link everything down below where you can find it. Like I said, it'll be on Kindle, Amazon, and then hopefully Audible one day. But I'm just so proud and excited to share this with you guys. I, this has been probably the most fulfilling and gratifying thing I've ever done in my life. I want to thank everyone out there that's been my support system, my friends, my family, um, everybody. Like, you guys have helped me get to this point. I can't thank you guys enough for being my biggest support system, my own personal cheerleaders every step of the way. Um, I've received such a positive outpouring since I told people I've done this book. I just, the love and support I'm receiving is 
indescribable. The amazing feeling it gives me, I can't even describe to you guys. And I can't wait to share this and hopefully connect with more people or their stories. And I'm just so excited for what the future will bring. So as usual, if you are someone struggling with sobriety, I am more than open to talking. A lot of people have sent me messages before. You can leave some comments down below this video. I try my best to respond to all of them. Um, you can shoot me an email. You can contact me on Instagram. But I'm telling you guys, check out this book if you are going through something similar. I hope you can take something out of it and learn because I'm so proud of this baby and I'm so excited to share her with you guys today. The fact that I'm putting it out on my two-year sober date just made this so, like, serendipitous and perfect. I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate my two years of sobriety than to do something like this that was so incredible and share it with all of you as well. As usual, thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave some comments down below. I will have my face on the screen here. You can subscribe to my channel and some of my other videos for you to check out. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I can't thank you guys enough. But I think that is finally all I have to say. So until next time, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.